in terms of if if we look at why we age as a kind of um, overview, right? So we have the epigenetic clock, um, but you you say that's not driving aging, and and blood is just a what? Well, yeah, no. So apparently, apparently, it seems apparently. because the, I mean the results that I have seen with elixir, which is the main center of reference is not consistent with a rejuvenation of the, what I call the phenotype of the animal. But what right. this is wonderful is that something can set back the epigenetic clock so far mm. back. Right. Yes. And so so what, 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 what is your idea for why we age? Where is the central clock that's driving? Is aging a natural process? It's like you reach maturity and then you just... Aging is just a continuation of that, or is there some other reason why we age? Well, in this uh, line that is uh, the line of life of aging, the, our life begins being clearly a programmed event where different stages are clearly programmed. This is in, no doubt the DNA is involved there, and of course the epigenome. And so this is very, very under a program and controlled in a different stages until you reach puberty. Puberty is also uh, controlled and programmed. And then at a certain age, it may vary a little bit according to, uh, for example, uh, temperature. I know that in Russia, uh, girls uh, menstruate a little bit later than in Ecuador because mm. temperature. But a, a, a Russian a girl will not mis begin menstruating at 30. No, no, just a one or two years of difference. So this is the variation that we, because intrinsically in the, 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 the events are programmed. Uh, they can be modulated a little bit. Well, then you reach, well, if, uh, animals and humans reach puberty and get to reproductive life, say in humans 20 years, 19, and then I, up to here, I am absolutely sure and everything, everybody would agree, uh, life is programmed. The events mm -hmm. of life are programmed. Then I have, there are two possibilities. If uh, one is that the um, senescence has some uh, evolutionary advantage or advantage to the species, this is why um, evolution selected uh, senescence uh, for, and senescence is something that is really programmed too. So the program uh, will continue with a plant senescent uh, of the organism, I mean decline. Mm. Second possibility is that not, it's like uh, Alex Comfort, the famous, famous geontologist, uh, uh, provided an um, analogy, very, very interesting that I I have used, used in a recent uh, review that I wrote. Um, um, interplanetary probe that constructed to uh, fly past Mars. So Mars will be reproduction for us, for our, for, so we are, perhaps we are programmed and built just to reach Mars, I mean, to reach uh, reproduction. And then it's like the voyagers, uh, the, the, there is nothing programmed you just uh, drift, the, and when the, there are different components of the body began to begin to deteriorate and uh, stop working, well, one dies. So, in, the, in that sense, uh, the program is, ends at the when you reach reproductive life, and maybe a little bit beyond that. This is one possibility, and the other is that uh, aging is actively programmed, and there are examples because uh, you have. Another kingdom that is uh, more rarely explored, plants. In fact, the, the people that are working on plants, I have discussed this matter with some, do not use, rarely use the word aging. They speak of senescence, senescence of the, of the leaves, senescence of the flower, because senescence in plants, uh, programmed cell death, is a very controlled and active uh, event. You see that every fall in the in the the tree that really, when they lose their their leaves, all the this is an active uh, or an active process ordered by plant hormones that order the leaf to die, but then progress uh, the orderly 
it translates, moves all the nutrients to the plant and then commits suicide. But also there is, and this is important, plants like soybean, that these are just biannual, that they live two years. And don't for reason that the evolutionist uh, could not explain probably, they, from the root, um, a hormone emerge is a signal for the plant to senesce completely. So the plant commits suicide in a programmed way. After two years of, of life, they commit suicide. This is what very well studied in plant physiology. There is a guy by the name Nuden, he's in Canada. I learned quite a few things from him. And uh, I even wrote uh, more to you some times ago. Well, anyway, uh, so there is the, ar the argument that evolutionists uh, put forward that there is no reason for a, a selection to, to, to keep genes or individuals that are not going to pass their genes to, the, to the, the progeny because they are beyond reproductive age. Uh, so this is no reason. Okay, uh, apparently there is no reason for the soybean plant to sacrifice uh, herself every two years. So what is the advantage of this? It's difficult to see from an evolutionary point of view. So our, our theory could be quite sound when, it, for example, this theory of evolution but if you have a hard data that contradicts that, now hard experimental data that contradicts your hypothesis, Mother Nature is, has, is always right. I mean, if Mother Nature says that, even if your theory is beautiful and says, no, Mother Nature, why are you doing that? Mother Nature is the, the, the queen. You know, that's, that's true. You have to begin to explain things, try to understand things in other ways. And uh, were well, difficult to say. So, anyway, I am not committed. I some people think that I am pro a program death. Uh, and I said, no, no, I am not. I am not yeah. committed. I am not. Co I, 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 I don't have any feelings of gut feelings that uh, incline me to one or to the other side. But it's not perhaps too too important to me. But what seems to be is important, in fact is that because these rejuvenation experiments and cells have revealed and have, have had a lot of implications very transcendental, very transcendental from the beginning, just challenging time honor theories of in biology. Well, that began with uh, animal cloning. Uh, so um, this uh, experiments done uh, in human cells, in centenarians, they, they were a French group that um, reprogram a uh, fibroblast in culture from healthy centenarians. A person is 100 years old, very old. So you culture those cells in culture, and those cells have a lot of uh, irregularities because not because they come from a, a deceased person, a person that is ill, because they come from a very old person. So that person, of course, have this dysfunctional component. So that's, those cells have shorter telom telomeres uh, in a higher um, uh, oxidative stress. Uh, the the, the transcriptome is typically of all, of all cells, not mm -hmm. young cells, transcriptomal signature, and many other factors which are consistent with all cells. Mitochondria are really very uh, uh, affected, they, they consume less oxygen, produce less energy. So everything is going down. But still the, it is, the person is not old and the cells are just old. So this French group reprogrammed those cells to IPC, to IPS, while the cells of course become IPS fully rejuvenated, like every IPS cell. And then they reprogram, they differentiated those cells to fibroblasts in fibroblasts. And they compared those fibroblasts from fibroblasts taken from young person, very young person. And although that battery of parameters that they compare were indistinguishable from the, that of those of the young person. So they really rejuvenated those cells. So this means that the epigenome, like that, uh, Interplanetary proof 
when he the, 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 the epigenome of those very, very old cells were really in bad shape, received the commands from those four, uh, nine, uh, six, they, he used six um, command uh, genes. They were able to respond. The epigenome, we assume that is the epigenome, responded to the rejuvenation signals and the cells came, came back to full youth. I mean, I've been an affair. So this is wonderful too, but this, there are also here an implication, Richard. Mm. Clearly the epigenome of those cells was not critically damaged. It's like with the, in, the, in that analogy, I will send you the, the paper now that it's step to be published. It's a review, a viewpoint. Yeah. Um, if the, if a, you have this, the Voyager, for example, that is far away now, let's assume that somehow it can be refueled and you issue orders from, from the jet propulsion level saying, come back. And they turn around and come back. That means that all the components, the hardware and the software were not critically damaged. Otherwise the, the, the ship could not respond to those orders. Mm. So in, in, in the terms of the epigenome, the epigenome should be sufficiently uh, with an integrity sufficiently well preserved to be able to respond to the cells. Well, this, this was what the uh, fibroblasts from that centenarians uh, did. And so this is definitely a proof that the epigenome, even at very advanced ages, is not really critically deteriorated because there is a um, theory, a hypothesis now that by the way, I sort of criticize in my, my review by um, David um, um, Sinclair. Uh, he says that because he, like me, he doesn't believe in the cumulative DNA damage theory. I never mm -hmm. believe in that. He doesn't. Either. So he says that um, uh, cells, um, what causes or drive the aging of cells is not uh, mutations or cumulative dam damage on DNA, but the dis progressive disorganization of the epigenome. Mm. Uh, so, but then he faces the problem to, to, to explain how cells that like those fibroblasts can be able to respond if there is a disorganized, disrupted genome and it can respond to the command cells from the four Yamanaga gene. It means that they are not so disorganized. Otherwise, they, you, they, are, they are able to just make the cell come back to youth. So everything should be working pretty well to achieve this because otherwise, a deteriorated system, disrupted system, could not do that. So he proposed to explain this, that that um, there is a backup system in cells, in mammalian cells, that keep a copy of the epigenome. The, the epigenome is something big. So they keep a copy of that. So when you expose the cells to the, to the Yamanaka factors, they somehow retrieve that backup, which is not damaged, and so rejuvenate. Well, this is a kind of quite involved theory because the implication what I uh, uh, say in my review is, this means that uh, in mammals, a very complex, pretty complex system of a storage, a backup storage of the epigenome evolved. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what is difficult to see, what is the what a evolutionary purpose that backup system uh, serves because really spontaneously, naturally, mammals do not rejuvenate. So what is the reason? Why do you want that uh, backup if you are not going to use that for anything? Because if there is, if there were a, a, the possibility of a mammal to rejuvenate uh, spontaneously, that could be explained, but this is not the case. This is not the case. So I prefer to think that simply that the epigenome remains uh, with reasonable integrity, even in very, very old age. So this, this is something important really. And of course it gives scope, but because it means that if you are a centenarian, you still have in theory the chances to be rejuvenated, but because your cells could respond to the Yamaha. 
And last word about the Yamanaga genes. What I like of the Yamanaga genes, despite their difficulty to uh, handle, is like nitroglycerin, is that they were created by Mother Nature. It was not some Einstein of biology that created them. So they have hundred million years to evolve, pr prove trial and error. And so they are time proven. So if you are using them, you know that you, you will not disrupt other systems here or there because they have been used by nature, developed and refined for many, many, many years. Of course, they do two things. One that we like, rejuvenation. The other that we don't like, the differentiation. And that's the point, the challenge for us, trying to separate those properties without uh, altering uh, the function of the gene, not making those genes dangerous. Well, that is uh, quite a challenge, really. So if something like elixir appear and work, that would be really a miracle. But right. well, miracles don't happen every day. <laughs> so we, we, have, we have to wait for that. You have to wait. We have to wait and see whether Elixir really works. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I, I, hope, I hope it does. I hope it does. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.